fare questa cosa. Cioè. Eh, lo dici una volta, Pescolotti. Sì, ma che Pescolotti, devo dire. No? Stai riprendendo, in realtà non so stai riprendendo. È inutile che... No, stiamo per intervistare Loretta Napoleoni. You, you know that you should do, I think you should do video blogs. Nobody does video blogs. I'm sure you want to do documentaries. But you know, to do documentaries is very expensive. I mean, you need somebody to sponsor you. Spero che voi lo facciate e poi l'anno prossimo ci dite che cosa succede. of Greece uh, is actually much more serious than we think it is. Uh, um, I think the markets uh, this week uh, have reacted uh, to the decision of the IMF uh, and the European Union. The problem is not solved at all because uh, we have to see the reaction of the Greek population to the austerity program which of course the IMF together with uh, the EU uh, will impose uh, to the Greek government in order to get uh, this amount of money. If Greece defaults, uh, um, it is very possible that it will have a domino effect, and so uh, the market will turn against Portugal and Spain, which have already been downgraded, and eventually they will also turn against Italy. Not necessarily these measures, uh, judging from what has happened during the Asian crisis, uh, are the right measures. <laughs> Uh, actually, the spelling is not pigs, but it's pigs, so it's two eyes. One is for Ireland and the other one is for Italy. Basically, the situation of pigs country is that you know, they have a very high uh, government debt, so national debt, I would say, which is uh, um, above 100% of the GDP or very close to that level, so between 90 and 100%. Uh, but the other element that we have to take into consideration is, of course, uh, the budget deficit. Uh, now, the budget deficit is the difference uh, between the um, government revenues produced by taxation and government expenditure. Uh, so, in the case of Greece, is we know now, is 13.7 percent. In the case of Italy is actually lower between 5 and 6 percent. I mean, we could discuss about why these countries were allowed to do that, of course, but as a matter of fact, Italy is one of those countries together with Ireland and together also with uh, the United Kingdom. Today, in order to start a political campaign, you have to have a, a lot of money uh, and you have to have the backing of a very large party. The idea that an independent person may run is it's just inconceivable because the costs are far too high. The group that comes from the Grillo area is quite interesting because at least we know that in their case uh, they are fully committed to sort of green revolution, so at least we have you know, something to discuss. But for what concern the other parties really, I, you know, I really don't see where the change is going to come about. In terms of promotion, of course, uh, I think the internet uh, is much more effective because well, because it goes to the kind of people that are interested in, in what I'm saying. But I think also that information will be more and more confined to the internet. Uh, I think that the traditional press is destined to disappear um, and a lot of uh, newspapers, uh, editors will tell you that this is what's going to happen. In Italy, it's very hard to to develop a, a, an opinion based upon uh, what you read uh, in the traditional media because it's so polarized, it's also so much based upon propaganda that often you miss the real meaning of an event. <laughs> Ma 
passaggio dalla comunicazione mediatica alla, al senso comune. Eh, lei conosce la professoressa? Mi sono informato, sei informato prima. Sono informato, sai. Ma tramite amici o su internet? O su... su internet, ho guardato oggi il blog. Io non è che mi posso legare a uno, vabbè, chiaramente, cioè non è che vado a scrivere il giornale. Cioè non me vorrebbero nemmeno. Però secondo me questa cosa che uno scrive per uno e non scrive per nessun altro. Dobbiamo andare alla mamma e Sì. Ok, ci vediamo dopo. Il nome nostro ci sono commesse delle atrocità che, francamente, se fossero avvenute negli anni 70, ci sarebbero state le manifestazioni delle piante ogni giorno. is so serious in, in the UK, um, the economic crisis is very, very serious, that these two will have one way or another to reach an agreement, but it'll be an extremely unpopular government because if they do what they're meant to do in order to um, get the economy going again and uh, to pay the debt, uh, Uh, then they will have to increase taxation at least by 50%, reduce drastically government spending, um, reduce also uh, social security, although you know, none of them wants to do it. Um, so it will be a very unpopular government, but that's the only way forward. But the Chinese system uh, is different from our system because it's flexible. So basically what the Chinese did was to start from a Marxist economy and adapt this economy to the needs of globalization. I, I describe it as a sort of um, capi communism uh, where you have uh, the, some elements coming from capitalism, some elements coming from um, communism, but uh, uh, a system which is a sort of hybrid that has is not capitalist as we know capitalism, it's not communism as you know, we know communism. So why the Chinese model is so much better uh, for globalization than our model, uh, which in reality is the model that created globalization. And, and of course, you know, the answer is the fact that uh, there is a certain kind of rigidity built in in our system and this rigidity is linked to the fact that we believed and we still do that the neoliberal model is perfect. I think that is the key issue of Western democracies is the fact that we have lost completely the concept of what the government should be do in order to regulate the economy. When I work together, then join the commons. Creative, Creative commons. commons.